I put this video off for a little while because I really haven't wanted to go back to season 7 of Spongebob. It's my least favourite, can't kind of objectively say it's the worst, because out of the 50 episodes made for it, I can't find a single one I love to watch in my spare time. Not only that, but the bad episodes are worse and more plentiful here than in season 6, at least in my opinion. I talked about how the gross out of that season wasn't much of a turn off for me, and that's because when you take it out, you're left with very shallow, lifeless episodes of a show that seemed dead at the time. Sure things have taken a turn for the better since 2010 when most of season 7 ended, but back then it felt like this could have been the start of Zombie Spongebob. I'm Employee Million, and here's why season 7 sucks. Number 5, Someone's in the Kitchen with Sandy. This season had a number of cheap imitations of, well, imitation crabs, but this is the worst of the bunch. It's disturbing enough finding out that Sandy's fur coat is an actual coat she can take off, and cruel enough seeing her get ostracized on the street when it's stolen by Plankton, but my personal biggest issue with this episode is that the crux of it is boring. It's just Spongebob showing Sandy's fur, controlled by Plankton, how to make a Krabby Patty in the slowest, most tedious possible way. There are a lot of technical issues in this episode, like undynamic character animation and visual gags that fall flat. It feels like an episode that was given a rushed rewrite to make the whole Sandy's naked angle more appropriate for children. God bless him for that, but it's still a terrible broken episode. Number 4, Big Sister Sam. In a nutshell, this is just I'm with Stupid, but ten times worse. Or two and a half, but you get what I mean. Patrick's sister comes to visit Conch Street, and the whole joke is that she's even dumber and meaner than her younger brother. The only conflict is the destruction of every house on the street, with Patrick not wanting to tell Sam off, Squidward getting angrier, and that's about it, and Spongebob failing to cool everyone down. Sam herself has virtually no redeemable qualities, she's simply designed to be a living incarnation of everything wrong with Dark Age Patrick. Worst of all, the fact that very few important events occur is exemplified by the location not changing one bit throughout the entire episode, except to an admittedly funny shoe-tossing gag. Number 3, Trench Billies. Continuing the trend of rehashing pre-movie stories, this time rock bottom, this is the nadir of a rather forgettable miniseries. Spongebob and Patrick fall off a cliff into a deep sea zone with different kinds of fish, but instead of frightening and creative kinds of fish, they just find disgusting hillbillies. I'm sure if they had TVs, they'd be offended by this episode. Anyways, there are a couple running gags, like Spongebob and Patrick winning against their stupid tests, them getting poached by a pickled fork, and one of my least favourite jokes, them trying to jellyfish but then smashing their skulls together and breaking their teeth in slow motion. It's not funny, creative, or even that safe for a family audience. Also, corn soda just seems nasty. Well, of course, these two are the worst on this list as well, and you're probably ready to skip them because you've heard the complaints towards them so many times. Bear with me, though, as I'm going to incorporate the reactions towards them into the reviews. Starting with the most infamous episode of Spongebob of all time, One Course Meal. On a surface level, it's Mr. Krabs gets Plankton to kill himself, but there's more to it than that. In the defense of Krabs, he's scaring Plankton to keep him further away from stealing the formula, and Spongebob never tells him Patrick's lying on the road as a form of suicide. As a matter of fact, aside from some tasteless bus jokes, the themes of death and suicide aren't even addressed, they're implicit, and children won't pick up on them. My complaints aren't with the themes, but the execution of them. The seriousness is soon completely discarded for a wacky ending where Spongebob exploits both Krabs and Plankton's fears, which for me is what breaks the episode beyond repair. Instead of getting them to be comfortable around each other again, he's only made the situation worse, and the episode ends there. Essentially, I can see what this episode's trying to do, and why it failed miserably, but there are more problems that need to be referenced than attention-grabbing words. Number 1, A Pal for Gary. The reason this is another contender for worst episode ever, and the one that I agree with, is because Spongebob's essentially the villain here, at least in the second half after they give him pointless motivations. He's not even a good villain. He never understands why Gary doesn't like their new pet and continues to yell at him when he's being eaten alive. This isn't clever or subversive, it's just intentionally bad writing. Additionally, I'm not much of a fan of Gary having much of a personality, not because I want him to be a pet and just that, but because I don't want him to have to face such hard dilemmas. Would you like a pet fending for its life against a puffy, fluffy, turned monster that's out to eat him? Not really if the owner's a jerk. The only half-handed compliment I can give this episode is that the monstrous form of Puffy Fluffy is creative, even if he doesn't fit the show. At the end of the day, I'm appalled they screwed up such an iconic character this hard. More than any other episode in SpongeBob's nearly 20-year history, it's a pain.
I'm not even scratching the surface of what's in store if you want to watch this season. I could easily make this a bottom 20 and still not be done. However, the season has its bright spots, even if they're few and far between and mostly nothing to write home about. Number 5, Model Sponge. The thing I like about this episode, in direct contrast to the last one, is Spongebob's personality and the turmoil he goes through. He thinks Mr. Krabs has let him go and finds a new job as a TV star. It's fun seeing him get so excited about the prospect of acting, and some of that as-seen-on-TV style glamour bleeds back into him. However, things turn out bad when it's revealed he's just meant to be a naked sponge for a commercial. In the scene, that's interesting, but yeah. There are a couple other problems I have with this episode, namely just how long they try to stretch out some of the jokes. I like this episode enough, and that's all I could ask for. Number 4, Enchanted Tiki Dreams. The best way to describe it is it's rewarding. Not just because Squidward suffered for 11 years up to this point, but because the opening minutes set this episode up for failure. It just feels like a generic Spongebob and Patrick torture Squidward plot, but if you stay long enough, you understand just how much Squidward needs a vacation, and are eventually satisfied when Spongebob and Patrick build a tiki paradise just for him to relax in. We're at a point where them just being nice to Squidward is enough to propel an episode above the rest, I know that, but this episode plays out like a nice relaxing dream, which it feels like at points it hinted that Squidward's hallucinating at least the dancing tiki heads. Number 3, Perfect Chemistry. Not quite perfect, but still on the air episode with a bunch of cool concepts. Sandy and Plankton finally work together on a science experiment, and I like the good scientist bad scientist dynamic they have going on. Making this episode even more unique, but in a way that's a double-edged sword, is its focus on fart jokes. They create a machine that turns things into gas before teleporting them, and the running gag is Squidward being freaked out at Spongebob appearing randomly, then disappearing into a fart. It's a fun routine, but it gets dry or smelly, you know. Regardless, what I like here I think works well, and that's enough to get it into the top three. Number two, the curse of Bikini Bottom. I always look forward to the Frying Dutchman for some reason. With Plankton becoming an everyman over time, it feels like his presence adds some much needed threat to the show. Particularly here when he turns Spongebob and Patrick into ghosts. The story's not much to write home about, but what works are the jokes, like Patrick being unable to sleep because his eyelids are transparent, and them likening being a soulless invisible being to Squidward. It's also got my favourite line in season 7, after Spongebob and Patrick try and fail to scare Squidward. His response? I knew I shouldn't have lent them my lawnmower. Number 1, The Abrasive Side. The reason this is number one is that it shares some similarities to the previous number one, not normal, namely the be yourself message, but it does its own thing. I like how they take advantage of Spongebob being a sponge, and he's given an abrasive side so he can say no to people, but ends up just being mean to all his friends. Notice how they make out of character moments funny by writing around them, and letting us know that Spongebob shouldn't normally behave this way. It helps that it's got some good jokes, that Marion Ross returns as Spongebob's grandma, and that abrasive Spongebob is a mean but memorable addition to the series. Unfortunately, one good episode of this relatively fine caliber isn't enough to bring up 49 inferior ones. I had a hard time watching this season from start to finish both times I did so. For a season of a late 90s early 2000s cartoon airing in 2010, the worst thing it could be was a boring slog, due to TV animation receiving a much needed facelift that year. Because it wasn't fun to watch back then, and certainly isn't now, it's all around a bad season of such a great show. Naturally, since this is my least favourite, that should mean season 8's an improvement, but just by how much? To be frank, that's always hard for me to pin down. Goodbye for now.